Dave here, how are you? Welcome to What's in Arthur's Toolbox, episode 15. Tonight we're going to be talking about marking gauges, but before I get into that, I'm going to have a quick chat about what we did last week, which was the Stanley 98. And I had someone get in touch with me and say, hey Dave, the edge rebate, edge rabbit, side rebate, side rabbit plane, whatever you want to call it, um, would also have been his Arthur's homemade version of the number 99. So there you go. When I put them side by side like that, you'll see what I mean. The blade is coming in from the other side. The opposing marking side. gauges or scratch gauges. So this one here I was given when I started my apprenticeship as a carpenter when I was 16. So I've had this a long, long time. This section here is called a beam or a stem. So this section here is called the fence or the headstock. I hope. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, it had, this particular one has a pin. Now pins were normally for marking along the grain. That's mine. Now let's step back to Arthur's and let's go with a basic one that he's got. This one here has a wedge and also it's just a point on the end. So you push the wedge back like that which allows you to move the fence along the beam, you lock it in position. I can use this as a reference point to create a parallel line along a piece of timber. And if I was to do it with this, I could do it like so. And there's the line. Now, why has he got different ones? The pointy ones, which is that one, the pointy one is for along the grain and the other ones, and he's got a few other ones here with knives, instead of a point, they're for going across the grain. And they do a fine job of it. Let's see if I can do that. But so it's just a line run across with one of his gauges. This little one is timber all the way through and obviously with a bit of metal there. But it also has increments stamped into it. So in inches. Uh, and also this particular one you can put the knife in either end. Let's go to this one, which has got a brass end. This is a little bit more of a Rolls-Royce version. On the end of the timber clamp is a brass screw that pushes against a steel plate down inside there. And I, I get amazed at how these guys work it so that there's very minimal wear on the beam. Now, talk about using this. This one has no moving parts except for the beam rotates in the headstock. There you go. See this? This is a little bit of a, an apostrophe shape. That way up. And also the end grain. And I think you'll be able to see it on this camera over here. So you pop it in there. The cutter, or the spike, is down this end. You can only just see it there. And you would slide this down to whatever width. Turn that in the spot. And it's not, <laughs> it's not going anywhere. How clever is that? Undo. There you go. Lock him up. Done. Brilliant. So those four are for that. Then he's got this one. Now I think this is a homemade one. Now, I don't know whether Arthur made this or one of his descendants. Maybe my uncle made it. And it is designed so that both the beams actually touch each, touch each other in the head. So the headstock is basically this shaft, and so it has two mortises in it, and the beams are acting as tenons. But as they are, when you put them in, it creates a tight fit, and you just tap them, al tap them along to where you want. Or I'm sure that Arthur would have tapped them on here until he got the right size. And then you have two, you have two units of measurement already on the one tool. That's pretty cool. Okay, that's it. Now, keep the comments coming in. This is fantastic. Get the discussion happening. Next week, we will be doing Stanley number 12. Now, Arthur's got this Stanley number 12 plane in there, and it's beautiful. It's actually a scraper plane and the blade sits up at 90 degrees and you can adjust the angle 
So that's what we're going to be doing. Read up on it. See if you've got all the answers before I tell you them. Okay, don't forget all this stuff up here and see you next time. Bye.